Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Are you ready for another crafting video? Okay, cool. So am I. Now for ages, I've been seeing lots of other creators on YouTube using XPS foam for model making, for, for using large structures, for terrain forming, etc. And I've always been wanting to give it a bit of a try. So I've used some insulation foam before for, for similar things, for, for rock structures, etc. But it's granular nature, it doesn't lend itself well to scribing stonework. So I've been looking for some XPS foam. The first difficulty is finding it. Lots of those helpful folks on Reddit say if you look at any construction company or supplier, you'll be able to just get hold of some, but it's not quite that easy. Certainly B&Q, where, you know, the, the UK's sort of largest um, supplier of construction materials doesn't seem to, to have the stuff, unless I'm looking in the wrong place. So I took to looking online. An online search for XPS Foam UK, because that's where I'm from, pulls up lots of results from insulation suppliers. But where to start? Is it going to be the right foam? I had a look at a few suppliers and found a very likely supplier who markets foam as craft foam but only sells it in bulk and it's very expensive for just a test. I like modelshop.co.uk or 4D models. They're my main supplier for model making materials and I think I'll be trying their offering next time. But on this occasion I went with these guys here and ordered a couple of sheets of 10mm. For my scale I want to make sure it's going to do what I want so I don't want it too thick. Ideally, I want 2mm, but 6mm is the thinnest they make, and I had reservations the quality wasn't going to be what I wanted. So this is what I've ordered. It's blue, and you can certainly see what you're doing with it. It comes in large sheets of 1200 by 600 so it's, you get quite a lot for your money. Now I've cut it down to a small, usable size. I say small, it's still quite big here. And um, we're going to see what we can do with it. Hint, it's going to be that. So stick around and let's see what we can do. Now unusually for me, I haven't planned this out in advance, but what I'm going to do here is make a little stone keep for this small Chaos Warrior from the 1980s. I've had this for quite a while so I thought I'd dig him out. So what I'm going to do first is draw out a rough shape of the door based on his height. So I'll draw in some verticals using a set square. A square. And then marking off a rough position for the curve, I'll just use this little pot as a template. I'll use this bigger radius pot for adding the top of the curve and then I'll just quickly draw in some keystones to go around the top. Now I did experiment with various implements for, for uh, scratching in the stone detail but what I decided on eventually was a pencil for providing the better way of marking it off. So I'm just marking out the rough shape of the keep, the, both the width and the height and then once that's done I can just roughly cut it out. This is creating the initial shape that I want to get. I'll just mark off the horizontals now, again using the pencil, go through it really quickly. Although this wasn't the actual speed, what I want to do is make sure that all my walls have exactly the same point for the horizontals so that they will eventually meet up. So using the first piece as a template, I can then mark on the rest of them just very quickly using a time lapse here to show me marking them in and once that's done now I can start marking in the windows I'm just roughly doing this by eye and we just want some little arrow slits a little bit bigger than arrow slits in the end and again just making sure they all match up and now I'll make sure that all the pieces are the same marking some extra windows at the back and I've just done this really quickly here but I've scrunched up some aluminium foil into a ball and I'm going to press that into the surface of the foam and as you can see there it's providing a really nice texture just to give it some added depth and relief. I want to go over the whole of the pieces that I've done and we'll get a really nice piece like this. Once that's done we can then start marking in the stonework. I wish it was as quick as this in real life but here we are just using the pencil to create some lovely stone shapes and once that's done we can then start cutting out the apertures. Just do it very carefully with the curve just to make sure you get the shapes right and cutting out some windows there. What we also want to do is get some detail into the reveals around the doors and the windows and just using the bit of foil there to get the texture on the inside of the walls. Now we're going to cut a mitre cut here to make sure all our pieces join nicely. All our curves, our corners even, join perfectly. So we'll cut a rough mitre angle. It's not always easy to do by eye, but as long as you're a nice sharp angle as opposed to shallow, it'll ensure that those corners meet up quite nicely. 
once I've worked out that it does meet I'll just use some super glue now I've tested this super glue beforehand it's quite a high viscous super glue and it doesn't give off any fumes it does make the foam a little bit soft but if any doubt I would always use a hot glue gun instead for gluing foam it does make that the gaps aren't as tight as they could be so uh, I've used an activator spray here just to speed up the process and it does set properly hard only slightly detrimental when you come to carving back into it but uh, it's a great way of gluing it very quickly now what I need to do before I glue the fourth side in is just make a little floor which is going to be the actual roof piece so I'll just mark out here just how big it needs to be that's going to sit on the inside and I'm going to scribe some plank detailing using the pencil with a wire brush just a cheap wire brush from the pound shop just scratch in some extra wood detail this gives some nice texture that makes it look a little bit more like wood and once that's in we can then glue the final fourth side in again just using some nice thick super glue and just making sure all those horizontal lines match up so we go around the corners quite nicely now I'm going to cut out some small thin pieces of foam just taking some slivers off the thickness of the material to create some some beams these are going to be the header pieces the stone the wooden lintels above the stonework and again just glue that on with a bit of super glue you who would work quite well here as well we're just going to go all the way around all four sides and add in all the four windows sometimes you can just cut it as you put it on just to make sure it's in the right place now once that's done I need to put a little door in at this point I'm just marking out where the door will go I'm going to put it in later so again using the same technique with the wire brush just scratching some detail in and then carving some plank detail now the best way of doing this is to cut in some little marks with a scalpel first and then make them a little wider what I've actually discovered here is that the roof wasn't quite in the right place so I've made a slightly bigger roof with a, a, padder, a padding piece and once that's in place I can then start to cut the crenellations out this was again, it's just roughly by eye, it's not planned out at all if I was going to do it again I'd probably draw the whole thing up first but it's just worked out quite nicely uh, as a nice little quick piece to make so once all the crenellations are cut out we want to start texturing the inside of the stone again in hindsight this could probably have been done before we started the construction part but there's just enough play here to be able to just press in the aluminium ball and create some texture on the inside just work way all through all the surfaces and try and get on the insides of the stonework as well once that's done we can use the pencil to mark in some rough stone shape that's going to be visible from the outside with that done the top can now be slotted back in place and we can just do a test fit fit what we have ended up with is a few gaps around the edges so I've just cut out another couple of pieces of foam textured them up and I'm going to stick them all the way around the inside creating a kind of wooden ledge we need to do this on all four sides of the model and add in a little bit of extra texture with a, a sharp scalpel blade just creating some more sort of grain for the wood do the same on all the lintels on the outside of the model and then we're ready for the painting stage now what I've done here is mixed up some grey paint with some PVA the PVA is to give it some extra strength to soak into the foam to make it a little bit stronger once that's all mixed in we can start applying it to the outside of the model thoroughly coat the whole thing making sure it's rubbed into all the crevices and then once that's thoroughly coated and the insides had a covering of grey paint it's time to glue the door in and with the door glued in place it's now time to give it an initial coat of paint so I'm just using a muddy brown which is going to be a nice base coat for the paint for the door colour I must say it does go on really really nicely onto the foam so once that's done we just need to give the other wooden pieces a coat with the same colour so we'll cover the roof and then all the stone lintels which we just missed and now it's time to give the whole thing a wash of black I've just mixed some black acrylic with some acrylic medium here and just gently saturating the whole thing it just nicely sets into all the crevices uh, which is whoops a bit runny there 
So we'll just cover the whole thing, including the stonework and the wooden panels, with a nice wash of black. It does go on really quite wet. It takes a couple of applications to get the consistency that you want, so it's all to do with how you mix your acrylic wash. But uh, I speeded the process up between mixes here with a hairdryer. But once we've got a wash down, it looks like this, and it's then time to go on to the next stage. This is the fun part now. We're going to mix some ready mixed grout with some grey acrylic paint. Just scoop it up into a little pot here. You just want to make sure we get a nice amount of uh, material to work with. And I'm going to mix it here with some grey acrylic paint. To start off with, I started smoothing in the grout mixture with a little silicon rubber tool. And this was a nice way of getting the mortar into those gaps, but in the end this tool provided to be a little bit on the cheap side and the tip fell off. Initially it worked quite well. So having got the mortar covered into some of the joints, I then used a wet damp tissue to smooth off the excess going all over. So we just gradually apply the mortar mix in stages all over the model and then once it's all on we just rub it off and we'll end up with something looking like this. It's knocked the stone down quite pale so I'm going to take some time now with that same black wash and just apply that wash all over in selected stones, not all over the whole model but in selected places and just letting it dry off using a hairdryer to speed the process up in places but we'll not do the whole thing, just adding some little extra detail to some of the stones obviously picking out the stone lintel again because that was quite pale so it's it's just something that you can work over and over until you're quite happy with now once that black wash has been done I'm going to use an olive green wash to add some algae effect now this is quite bright now but it will lighten off quite a lot one thing I experimented with doing here which was quite fun was actually using a wet blend technique so once the green acrylic was down I went over it again with the black wash just blending it in and toning the whole thing down Again, it's still looking quite bright here, but once it's dry, it will lighten off quite nicely. So as you can see here now, the green has lightened off quite considerably, and we're left with a nice looking, subtle stonework. I decided at this point it'd be quite fun to add a little skull to the front door. So this is just a little Citadel skull from the Citadel Skulls pack. I've given it a coat of white paint, and then I'm just going to use a wash of brown to give it some aged look. Again, speeding up the process with a hairdryer that we've affectionately called Helen. Now off camera I've cut out another little disc out of the XPS foam. This is going to be our base and we're going to cover this with a layer of brown paint. This is just to give the base a base coat to start off with. The best method I've found for this is just to squeeze on some acrylic paint and then paint it in. It does take quite a lot of paint. It's quite thirsty as the foam but uh, with a little bit of paint we can get that nicely covered. Now before this is dry I'm going to use it as a bit of a glue. So we'll just roughly put the tower in place and I'm scattering on some rough earth cover. This is just a flock, I can't remember what it's called that off the top of my head but it's just a nice little um, earth covering and we'll cover the whole thing making sure it's nicely applied. The paint will act as a glue and what I'm going to do now is cover it with isopropyl alcohol just to soak into that flocking and give the glue something to adhere to and a mixture of diluted PVA can now just seep into all that flocking and it will secure it quite nicely on top of that I'm now going to add some fine grass foliage this is just a little fine foam, it's the same stuff that I've made previously and on top of that I'm going to use some static grass just to give it a little bit more extra texture. Now this is just a rough basing. We've already made the, the stone tower. This is just a little bit of embellishment. We're going to add some more thicker foliage. Again, if you've seen my how to make a hedge out of sponge video, this is the same material from that. I'll put a link down to that video below in the descriptions. Now again, this is from the last video. This is an extra piece of vine foliage some ivy that I made, a little bit of spare for that from the last video. Again, I'll put the link below if you haven't seen that. I'm just going to glue that on the piece of U-Home. 
Now, somebody very helpfully suggested whilst I was making this, I did actually live stream it, that they'd like to see some stone pathway. So what I've done is I've cut out some slivers of XPS foam from some scrap, and I'm just going to glue those in place with a bit of super glue. In hindsight, it would have been better to have painted them first before gluing them in, but I'm just going to now, once it's glued in place, put a little covering of stone and then add a little black wash again using some green acrylics mixed with black and we've got a nice stone finish and our little ogre can sit on the top there and so can the chaos warrior and with that i think it's just about done so here we can now see the final finished piece and i think you'll agree it's turned into quite a nice little model it's quite amazing what you can do with XPS foam and for my first venture into this I'm really quite impressed at how it's worked. If you like my content please let me know in the comments, consider subscribing and I'll see you again in the next video. Thank you for watching.